Me and you go over to Roscoe Chicken and Waffle Home. Do you That's like gold, what, man? special, smothered in gravy and onions. Welcome to Using Gooey Styles and Gooey Skins for Unity, Lesson 5. So in this particular lesson, uh, we're going to go over the process of creating sliders um, and using a custom GUI style for that. Now it can get a little bit tricky, so let's let's go over into the actual code over here and let's get a uh, slider up and running. So I'm just going to actually utilize this previous slider that I made. So I'm going to add a little bit of space here in between our buttons. Let's go to layout.space. <laughs> do something like 10 and our slider itself so we can actually read this pretty well all right so we have the speed value all right and we have this editor GUI layout dot slider now if we go through and we look at all the different overrides there are no options to uh, style a editor GUI layout dot slider and you'll find this with a few of the different editor GUI layout GUI elements. So in this case, we have to actually switch over to using GUI layout.slider. So we're going to make a horizontal slider for this. And you'll notice that the second override for this particular method, the horizontal slider, we can actually give two GUI styles a slider, which is the trough, and then the thumb or the knob of the slider, okay? So let's actually get our slider all set up first so that we can um, actually see it, okay? <coughs> So I want to give it the value. So we're going to say target script dot speed value. The left value is going to be zero. The right value is going to be 10. And that is all we need. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. All right. So now we have a slider and it's got the default uh, GUI element that's given to us by Unity. All right, so it doesn't really fit our current styling that we're going with, this game tutor um, type style. Okay, so we want to actually style it with that. So we're going to make the knob orange, and we'll make the trough, you know, darker black. That way it stands out. And we'll give the knob some hover and active states as well. Okay, so let's get all that rolling. So I'm going to go over into uh, Photoshop over here, and we need to make a couple textures. So I'm going to make a new texture, and this time, let's just do 32 by 32. All right, and this will be the thumb, or the knob of the slider. So I'm going to make a new um, layer there. And I just want to make a circle, basically, so we can actually get the center of this particular image by dragging down a couple of rulers there. And I just want a circle like so. Just make sure that we don't necessarily go all the way to the edge there. Okay, so then let's actually uh, fill it with that orange color. There we go. And we can give it uh, a little bit of a, a look, so that way it feels a little bit more custom, okay? So I'm going to give it a couple of styles here inside of Photoshop. So let's do... We're going to do um, a... Let's do an inner shadow, but we'll actually make it white. So I just want to make this 90 degrees right here. And we're going to make this white. And we'll set this to uh, overlay, like so. And we'll just give it two pixels. Let's actually make it w one pixel. How about that? And maybe two. All right. That'll just give it a nice little highlight at the top there. And we can also bevel and emboss it as well. And we can do it, yeah, we can do it like that, but I want to make it a little bit more, less apparent. <laughs> yeah, I like it like that over there. We'll bring down the opacity on that a little bit. <clears throat> Let's do something like that. That looks pretty good. All right. So there is our thumb graphic. So I can just flatten this down now. And let's save it off. So I'm going to call this the slider thumb. Oh, one. Like so. 
And then we need the trough. Okay, so let's make a new uh, 32 by 32 texture there. And this time uh, we are going to make something that is a little bit more rounded, but still has a nice uh, top edge to it, okay? So to do that, let's actually just create some rulers for the full bounds of this texture. Create a new layer over here. And I'm gonna get my rounded rectangle and let's actually make this something like 25 for the radius. And we'll just drag this all the way up like so. And it's almost a circle. Maybe we can go down to something like 20. Let's do that instead. Want kind of more of that flat side. So maybe we'll do 18. Yeah, that's pretty good. Alrighty. So then for this, what we want is that dark gray color over here. And then just a little bit more black. That way it stands out from our background. Alrighty. So that's pretty good. So we also want to give it a little bit of an edge. So um, let's add a bevel and emboss to it, but we'll do a down bevel like so. And we'll make the size two pixels. So it's really clamped there. And we're just going to do up, down, basically. Like so. That's not too bad. All right. So let's actually take a look and see how we get all the setup. So let's save this guy out to Unity. And we will call this, what was Unity calling it again? the slider. All right, so slider, actually I'm just gonna call it trough, like so. All right, so let's get our slider all set up. So we need two new styles here. So we're gonna say GUI style. Um, we'll call this slider thumb style. Equals a new GUI style. And we'll do a new GUI style and call this slider uh, trough style. Equals a new GUI style. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. So then down here, we need to set up our GUI style. So we're going to do the slider. Remember where we came in? Which way? Louis? Which way? No, that's towards Sears. Louis? Welcome to using GUI styles and GUI skins for Unity. Lesson six. So in this particular lesson, we're actually going to cover an easy way to start setting up your own GUI skins or styles, okay? Um, basically, Unity has a thing called GUI skins. So if we um, actually go and down into our resources folder here and right click and say create GUI skin, what we get is a collection of GUI elements. So what we've been doing this whole course is actually creating custom versions of all of these particular GUI styles. These are a bunch of GUI styles right here, okay? And what Unity has provided us is a way to actually, it's an asset, right, that allows us to bundle up a bunch of different types of GUI styles using the standard format, okay? So you notice that we have font in here. So if I were to actually pull in a different font, let's actually go back to our fonts again on my system <clears throat> using lovely Windows 8 <laughs> to try to navigate Windows. And let's just pull in something like, something fun, we'll do that, this Acme fonts. All right, so now we have Acme in here. All right, so if we go back to our GUI skin, what we can do is actually, let me go to my skin here and actually select the Acme font so that now this particular font will be used throughout this whole style. All right. So what we want to do is we want to actually start to get an idea of how we can utilize this in our editor. Okay. And now we can actually take advantage of that resources.load function inside of the resources class to load a GUI skin that we define. All right. So let's actually get that all set up. Let me close my search. All right. So this will just make it easier for us to create these GUI styles instead of, having, instead of having to write a bunch of code, even though 
doing this is really, really good so that you know what's going on and how all the different parameters actually work when working with GUI styles. Because you don't want to have to try to create a skin for everything. But you can. So I just wanted to show you both ways. Show you the hard way first. Now I'm going to show you the easy way. <laughs> all right. So let's say um, GUI, we're going to make a new GUI skin. All right. And we're going to call this my test skin right there. And we'll just leave it at that. Now what we can do right here in the on enable function here, we can say if that test skin is equal to null, then let's go and find it. All right. So we'll say again, the test skin is equal to resources dot load. And we're going to try to find that path. So the path will just be test skin because it's already in that resources folder. So I'm going to come back into Unity here. And what it'll do is that tell you that it can't implicitly convert an object to a GUI skin. So again, we have to cast it. So we'll say GUI skin. All right. So then when we click on it, it'll go and search for that skin and try to get it. So what we can do is then utilize all these styles here that we can set up and apply textures to. And you'll notice that we have all the same stuff like we did in code. We have our border, we have the margin, the padding, overflow, all the different options available to us. We can give it a custom font if we wanted to. So pretty powerful in terms of keeping things organized and um, making it a little bit more efficient for you to set up multiple skins. And also you can start to then store these skins um, on some sort of hard drive or something like that and reuse them over and over and over again instead of having to write all the code. Okay, so much easier way than actually defining all the um, code, but still good to understand what all that stuff is actually doing when you're creating your own GUI styles. All right, so if we get that GUI style, let's actually um, replace, let's test it out. So let's replace this title A with the test skin dot label, because that is that style in that particular GUI skin. So this label right here has all the features that we want um, to utilize. Okay, so we can give it a custom font, we can give it its own custom size. So let's actually see what happened. So let's click on our object. And bam, there we go. We have title A. All right. It's not using the Acme font. So let's actually replace that. So what I'm going to do is just say Acme. And let's make it a little bigger. So let's give it 32 like we actually had set. And we can also style it with a bold. You can align it really quickly. Let's test it out again. And there you go. So what we're doing is we're really quickly starting to build up a new GUI style for our particular editors over here. So you can see how much quicker you can start to build that stuff up. All right. You can also start to create custom um, styles within this GUI skin over here because we don't necessarily have a header type style. All right. And we don't want to overwrite the label because currently we're using the label as title A. So what we need to do is create a custom style within our GUI skin to create this header object. So let's do that now. So what I'm going to do is go into the custom styles right here. And you can see we already have an element populated. So there's already one available. So I'm just going to call this the header style. All right, just like we did in code, header style. And the normal texture is going to be our header BG. The text color is going to be white. All right, and that's pretty much all we need to do. The font will be our Acme. Font size is going to be, let's do 45 this time. We're going to align the text so it's middle center. We'll word wrap it. Perfect. All right, so let's actually test it out. So what we need to do is call up the header style. So let's go back in our code. So instead of using our own header style that we built in our script, we can call up test skin dot custom styles and give it an index. So the index is going to be zero in this case. All right, so let's test that out. Because the index is the first element in this list. All right, and there you go. So what we did was we just created a new type of header using our GUI skin. 
All right, and that's how you basically use uh, GUI skins to um, create everything that we've already created just without having to write any code. So much, much nicer, much faster. Just gives you two options in terms of uh, creating custom GUI for your editors. All right, thanks so much. Is style or is it the next one up? I'll say anything else, okay? Welcome to using GUI styles and GUI skins for Unity lesson seven. So in this final lesson, we are going to cover um, just how we can also start to make our editor building experiences a little more modular. Okay, so what I want to do is actually uh, create a static script that's going to hold um, a bunch of pre-built uh, GUI um, setup. So basically, you, you'll notice that we have this slider with this label in front of it, but I also want to put the uh, value on the other side, right? So we can actually see what the value is when we're dragging this. Right now it's pretty arbitrary. There's no information being given to us. Okay, so what we want to do is what we would do normally, right? If we were just doing this uh, straight up like this is uh, say GUI label, GUI layout dot label, right? And we'd give it the target <clears throat> script dot speed value as the label and then just give it a width. So something like, I don't know, 65. So GUI layout dot width is 65, like that. All right, so that now should actually put that over here. And this is telling me that It wants a texture. That's not real. Let's do two string. Let's do that. There we go. All right. So now we have the float value over here. And I can give it to my title C as the style. Like so. That way we, it's actually styled for us. There we go. So now we, we can see the value, and currently um, there's way too many values. So all we all we have to do over here is just give the amount of decimal places we want to see, like that, to the two string method. There we go, and we can reduce the actual width of this something like 45, so it's much cleaner. But the point is that we don't want to have to do that for every single um, element in our whole editor, right? We want to actually be able to reuse some generic code that allows us to place all that stuff, okay? So let's start that process because I don't want to have to rewrite all this for every single one of my float values. I could have 20, maybe 30 float values, and I don't want to type all that out again. So this is where a nice static script co will come into play for us and really help us out. So I'm going to create a new uh, C sharp script over here and I'm going to just call this my editor GUI utils. All right. And I'm going to launch this and get it ready. All right. So we can't extend from Monty behavior because this is going to become a static class. All right, and we're going to have to utilize the Unity Editor for this. And we don't need any of these mono behavior functions right there. All right, so what we want to do is we want to bundle up this code right here. So let's just copy it to give us something to work with. All right, so I'm going to put this inside of a public static um, float. And we're going to call this my float. GUI. All right. And now we're going to have to pass in a few parameters. Okay. And we're also going to have to start to return a, a parameter. All righty. And so basically, uh, we want to return the float value of this particular horizontal um, slider value right here. All right. So what we need to do is we need to create a float. Well, actually, we need to pass in the uh, particular um, Float value, so we probably don't need to return anything. Let's just do a void. So we're going to pass in this particular speed value. So we need that. 
as an argument. So float curve value. All right, and we need the title. So we're going to do a string um, title. And then we also need these integer values right here and the min and max values like so and a couple of styles. So we need to pass in quite a few options here in order to make this um, a little bit more usable. And we could probably bundle this up a little bit better and generate the, the actual styles in this particular static class. But for now, I just wanted to show a quick example of setting all this up here. So I'm not going to pass in these int values. Um, all we need to do is put this curve value in place of these two things, like so. And we need to give it the two styles. So we need a GUI style. We'll call this the trough style. And get rid of that there. Say GUI style, thumb style, like so. So now we can replace those guys. So this is going to be a trough style. This is going to be the thumb style. All right. Oh, and we need uh, the two um, title styles. So let's put that right after this guy. So we need GUI style, title style. All right. And we'll make sure that we put this curve value in for this right here. And that should be good. We should have everything up. Oh, we need to replace that title there with this. Perfect. We could also do the min and max values, but I think that this will get the point across. All right, so let's actually go back to Unity and make sure we don't have any errors in here. All right. So now what we want to do is replace the code so that we can use it. So I'm going to come back into my editor script here. And let's actually just say that the target, well, actually we're going to do editor, GUI utils dot my float GUI, and the value is going to be the target script dot speed value. And the title is going to be speed value. And the uh, title style is going to be title C. And we're going to get the slider trough style and then the slider thumb style. There. So if all goes well, we should actually have another slider under here that gets drawn for us. And it doesn't actually allow us to change the slider at all. And that's just because uh, we're not actually returning any sort of value. Okay. <clears throat> so what we need to do is we need to allow the value to be returned so that we can actually update the, the script's value um, while we move the slider. So to do that, what we need to do is come over to our editor GUI utils and we need to say float. So we're going to return a float and then we're going to return that curve value. So every single time this changes, we're going to turn that curve value. All right, and then in our editor, we need to say that the speed value equals that return value. And then now we don't need any of this stuff. So we just reduce all those lines of code down to a single line. Okay. So there we go, we have our same float slider, and now we're actually able to move it when we can see the value. So now all we have to do, we can actually remove all these guys so I can just say that that equals editor GUI utils dot float my float GUI and we give it that same height value 0f to 10 0f slider trough style well, actually we need to do title sorry let's just copy all this stuff off right here that's all we need. I don't think you guys need to see me type this all out. There we go. And we can get rid of this guy. And we can do it again. So let's just copy this line of code and replace the, the arguments that we need to replace. So distance value, distance value, 
do distance value here. Like so, and we can get rid of this. So we reduced a ton of code by just doing a little bit of extra work on this side and bundling it up so we made a reusable function over here. And that allows us just to declare a single line, making our code much easier to read. So now we, we should get the same values. All right, so that's how you can use static methods to um, start to build out a modular GUI that you can reuse over and over again. And that completes uh, using GUI styles and GUI skins for Unity. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. This is a tasty burger. <laughs>